guys, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about a very common, yeah, frustrating condition that we see during pregnancy, but also when you're not pregnant. It is melasma. My name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So melasma is a benign condition of hyperpigmentation and it is very commonly seen in women during pregnancy. In fact, the other name we call it is the mask of pregnancy because often will come on the face almost like you're wearing a mask most commonly during pregnancy, but you certainly don't need to get pregnant to get melasma. A lot of women will just notice it coming out of the blue or when they start a new hormonal therapy, most commonly birth control pills. Melasma is characterized by these tan brown patches, usually symmetric on the face most commonly, but certainly I've seen it on the shoulder, on the arms, and on the body. It can have a different types of presentation, but most commonly Commonly, women will find it on their forehead, like the lateral forehead, on what we call the zygomatic cheeks, or could just even have it on their upper lip, almost like a mustache. And unfortunately, like many dermatologic conditions, melasma is chronic. We have yet to find a cure, and we don't know exactly why it occurs, but it is multifactorial, meaning a lot of things contribute to it. Number one, we know that ultraviolet radiation, aka sun exposure, is huge. In fact, when we talk about treating melasma or any hyperpigmentation conditions for that matter, sun protection is what we really hammer on home. And literally everything that you do cannot be done without proper and strict sun protection. So sun protection is huge. But we also know that a lot of us go on the sun, but we don't all get melasma. So there has to be other things. We know that genetics can certainly play a role. And when I say genetics, it may run in families, but maybe you are just more prone to getting it for some reason than another. We know that there often is an inflammatory component, maybe even like a skin barrier component, often associated with a barrier disruption. We know that in certain individuals, sensitivity to hormonal changes, whether that's during pregnancy or starting a contraceptive treatment can all influence melasma or bring out a melasma. And it almost is like all the right things have to be in place for one individual to really get melasma. Now it's further complicated by the fact that we know there is not just one cell in our skin that's involved. We typically think of melanocytes, the cells that produce pigment that's ultimately responsible, but now we know that aside from the melanocytes, your keratinocytes, so your skin cells, your fibroblasts, the cells that make you know collagen and scar tissue, as well as mast cells. So these are like certain type of allergy cells that causes hives in the skin can all contribute and play a role in melasma. We even know that heat as well as vasculature, certain amounts of blood flow into the skin can also impact and have a part in creating melasma. So it is super complicated. And so that is also another reason why it's often very challenging to treat as well. One of the most common questions I get is, can I prevent melasma? Now, certainly, I can feel Feel like you do the, all the right things and it still happens but there are things that you can do and really the most important thing is to really practice strict sun protection not just wearing sunscreen on a daily basis not just reapplying regularly but this is when you kind of want to avoid the sun in, in a way where you don't ever really want to be outside in direct sun exposure always have a hat on and you may even want to consider other supplements to take in the summertime where we tend to see melasma flare and I'll get into that in a little a bit. So aside from prevention, other things that you could do is just take good care of your skin, avoid a lot of things that may cause inflammation, potentially increase heat to your skin. That certainly can increase blood flow. And since we know that vasculature can play a role, that certainly can potentially be a driver of melasma as well. So now let's talk about basically the most commonly asked question I get on my social media is what is the best treatment for melasma? And unfortunately, you guys are going to hate this answer, but there is 
isn't one. When it comes to melasma, the best treatment is often a combination of multiple treatments, including things that you put on your skin and an office procedures to give you the best result. Because treatment also depends on the severity, the type of melasma, the extent of your melasma, as well as your skin color. So what do I mean by the type of melasma? Well, we know that melasma can actually have an epidermal and dermal component. So what I mean by that is melasma can just be very superficial on the epidermal part, the superficial part of your skin. And often those type of melasma respond a little bit better and faster to certain treatments and they respond a little bit better to treatments in general. And the deeper dermal melasma tends to be a little bit harder to treat with topical things. And so this is where an office procedures where it's able to reach a little bit deeper into your skin are going to offer more benefit. So how would you know if your melasma is epidermal or dermal or both? The most important thing is seeing a dermatologist because we have a little special tool in our office called a woods lamp that can light up in the dark and basically can demonstrate to us what type of melasma that you have. Now, when it comes to treating melasma, we have a lot of lightening and brightening products on the market, but really what's been shown to be the most effective is really the combination therapy of hydroquinone, usually 4%, a topical retinoid, and then often in combination made with a topical steroid. So we call that the triple therapy and that often has the best response. Here, we are really referring to like tretinoin. Certainly you can get benefits with retinol, but just understand because they're a lot weaker, the results are gonna take longer with consistent use over time. Now, I know there's a lot of different opinions on hydroquinone, even amongst dermatologists, and it's a medication that is strong, not often tolerated by everyone, but still hydroquinone has the best level of evidence when it comes to treating melasma. The risks of hydroquinone is really that it can be very irritating and because it is a skin bleaching cream, you can certainly get areas that are lightened up where you don't want to when you are using the cream. I mean, certainly there are reports of undesired darkening of the skin called exogenous ochronosis, which really has been reported in really strong strength of hydroquinone. So usually maybe 8%, 12%, or even 20%, which you typically don't see here in the US. And certainly hydroquinone is something that we don't recommend using long-term. Usually we kind of say three months on, three months off, alternating with other non-hydroquinone based treatments. But certainly that is one that is really have been shown to be the most effective. The only caveat I recommend is if you are gonna use a hydroquinone product is to really understand the safety and the side effects and recommend seeing a dermatologist once you do start on it to make sure that you're using it correctly and you're not having any side effects. So what are some of the other ingredients that you can certainly incorporate and can help with lightening up the melasma? Alpha hydroxy acid certainly can be helpful. Either in office, more effective deeper chemical peels or like an alpha hydroxy acid based overnight treatment. You know, there are a lot of brands out there that have this now. Some of the ones I really like that I've talked about before you can find in my previous video, which I also link below in the captions too. But like, for example, Naturium 10% alpha hydroxy acid. If you want to look for a pricier one, the SkinCeuticals glycolic 10 overnight treatment is really, really nice. I really like Medic 8. Their alpha hydroxy acid overnight peel. I mean, there are a lot of them out there. The key is really make sure that you ease your way into it and to just understand that all of these things are going to take time. And by far the most effective is really um, doing in office chemical peels. They're gonna able to reach in your skin deeper. Other ingredients have been shown to be beneficial includes vitamin C. So here, my holy grail, SkinCeutical C Ferulic is a great one. Revision C Plus Correcting Serum is one that I regularly recommend for sensitive skin. It's more of a like a lotion serum that's less irritating. Tranexamic acid is another ingredient that's gained popularity over the years. Oral version of it to really be helpful at treating recalcitrant and melasma. If you are interested in oral tranexamic acid, there are pros and cons to it. I'm happy to make a video if you guys are interested, but this is where speaking to your dermatologist will be really helpful. Now, 
while topical tranexamic acid has certainly shown in few studies to offer benefit for melasma as well as other hyperpigmentation conditions. It is very safe and certainly between the percentages of three to five have been shown to be effective. And the one that has the most amount of studies is the one from SkinCeuticals, so discoloration defense that contains 3% tranexamic acid, 5% niacinamide, kojic acid, and some other ingredients that's been shown to really carry out the maintenance of melasma treatment, um, especially when combined with oral tranexamic acid. Another one of my favorites is from Naturium, their multi-bright tranexamic acid 5% serum that also contains kojic acid, arbutin, which is a derivative of hydroquinone, and niacinamide as well. And so there's a lot of great options. I think the key is to just like stick with one, limit your active ingredients, give it time, and at the same time really work on strict sun protection. So let's get into like a typical algorithm for treating melasma. Number one, you know, cleanse your skin, gentle cleanser, limit irritations. For the morning, you can certainly consider like a vitamin C serum, add on say one more ingredient, whether that is like tranexamic acid or say azelaic acid or something like that. But I would really limit your ingredients to two and then moisturizer to really help with your skin barrier repair and then sunscreen. And here I recommend tinted sunscreen, especially if you are darker skin. We know that visible light, which is only protected by iron oxide in tinted sunscreen will play a role in perpetuating pigmentation and melasma in darker skin individuals. So if you have skin tone like myself and darker, tinted sunscreen is really gonna be your best friend. At night, number one, make sure you thoroughly cleanse your skin, remove makeup. Again, another serum or treatment, it can be again, tranexamic acid, licorice root, azelaic acid, what have you, and then your topical retinoid, and then your moisturizer, and, and that would be it. If you are using or want to incorporate like a the chemical exfoliant like alpha hydroxy acid, I certainly recommend breaking that up from your retinoid if you are using one. So alternating the nights you're using it or using it in the morning, just make sure that if you are using vitamin C that you're not getting too irritated from using vitamin C and your glycolic acid at the same time. If you do have a prescription hydroquinone, this is where going with the recommendations of your dermatologist is gonna be really, really helpful. And if you are using a prescription hydroquinone or triple formulation, then that already includes a topical retinoid. So, so that really should be the only thing you should be using at night. Quickly, a few other things. Make sure to give yourself enough time. Melasma is often very challenging to treat. Certainly if you've been using products for three to six months without improvement, then I highly recommend seeing a dermatologist. This is where your dermatologist can help you determine maybe the type of melasma that you have or even recommend additional treatments that is gonna offer further benefit to your skin on top of what you're already using. One last thing with melasma flaring in the summertime, one supplement I recommend taking in the summer for those who are prone to melasma flaring during the hotter months of the year, there is a supplement that has been shown to offer antioxidant benefits, additional protection from ultraviolet radiation. And I have seen individuals who take the supplement in the summertime really minimize the amount of damage to their skin and can help really minimize the darkening of their melasma during summertime. And this supplement is called Polypodium Leucotomus. The most common brand is called HelioCare. It's basically a fern extract that has shown in clinical studies to basically minimize the amount of UV damage on the skin. So if you're more prone to sunburns or you have a sun sensitive conditions and you can't avoid being out in the sun for long periods of time, taking the supplement in addition to proper strict sun protection has been shown to be really helpful. And I do find that for a lot of my melasma patients taking this supplement in the summertime can offer additional protection to their skin and help to minimize potential darkening of their melasma. One last comment, if you are expecting, please talk to your provider about what you can safely do to help with your melasma during pregnancy. Certainly hydroquinone, topical retinoids are off the table. They're not appropriate, not recommended during pregnancy. Even the supplement is something that you want to speak with your provider about. And remember, all sunscreens are safe to use throughout pregnancy. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'm sorry, there's a lot of information and certainly it's not one that can easily be crammed into one video. So I'd be happy to either go into detail about a particular segment or if you want more product recommendations, let me know. I have an older video on more affordable products, but certainly happy to make a revamped video of pricey and more affordable products if you guys wish. Or if you want some more tinted sunscreen recommendations, let me know in the comments below. Again, I would love it if you could give this video a thumbs up and 
subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Bye!